Well, we found that on the islands with no rats, there were about 750 times more seabirds. And that equated to about 250 times more nutrients or nitrogen being deposited on the islands. And you could really tell the difference. If you set foot on an island with rats, it's quiet, it's eerie, you can hear the, the waves lapping on the shore. The amount of fish on the islands, or on the coral reefs next to the islands with seabirds, was 50% higher than the islands with rats. What was astounding was the growth rates of the ones that were at the Nemena site, the one with the seabird nutrients, grew up to four times more than the same species just transplanted to another site. Coral reefs should recover and, and fare better in the face of, of cyclones and in the face of, of coral bleaching if they are next to islands with abundant seabird populations. So I think in terms of both the health of the marine system and food security for communities that are reliant on coral reefs, having those intact ecosystems is really critical. So our coral reefs is like a buffer for our coastline. It acts as our first line of defense against the impacts of severe weather events or climate events. So that's why I think it's, it's quite important for invasive species to be integrated across climate change adaptation uh, actions in our countries. If you can maintain your healthy coral reefs and um, by enhancing their growth rates and, and their health through maintaining those seabird populations, you'd be giving them a, a greater sort of advantage of maintaining those food security resources. Rat eradication is low hanging fruit in terms of doing something on, on islands that, that will have a long-term benefit and not just to the terrestrial environment, but also to the natural marine environment. Invasive species management is a really important tool for building climate resilience. Resilience building is really about building the ability of um, both people and their environment to adapt um, and build and come back after change. We have one of the largest um, nesting rookery, green sea turtle rookery in the entire region of Micronesia. So it's very connected to the culture. It's a big delicacy. Indigenous folks are afraid of the word conservation because it means no take, and no take means, you know, food security issue for us. The obvious lifeline, really, for these communities that rely on fish as their main source of protein for generations is really the reef. It's really to see the reef producing for the people in a way that's sustainable. The really important thing that people can do is try to take invasive species out of the invasive species silo and again make it a solution not a problem. And that's not really about selling invasive species to people, it's about making sure that it really is a solution to the problems that um, communities are identifying and um, I think if we start doing that, we'll transform that space. The thing that our people care about is, will it put food on the table tomorrow? Will it give me money to put my children in, in, in school? To me, it's very important that communication is seen as a tool to make invasive species sufficiently visible to the eyes of, of our coastal communities so that they see clearly the linkages between eradicating invasive species and how that would strengthen or contribute to strengthening our sources of livelihoods. The island conservation who are taking the lead on this eradication work who actually are I feel are very willing and actively seeking to work with us and, and understand what's important to these cultures because that determines the result. the management of invasives, um, it needs to be considered seriously and it needs to be mainstreamed and integrated in nature-based solutions that um, countries and communities are considered as best solutions to adapt to uh, the impacts of climate change. We need to kind of reframe a lot of these things. Um, 
Because I think a lot of the time we tend to see communities as lacking something, whether it's resources or knowledge or agency, but in, in fact they have agency, they have the ability to do things. Here's a willing community to do this work, understanding the work, and the bigger picture I think is for the neighbouring islands uh, that share similar habitat, similar issues and similar challenges with resources. Leadership is, is very important and I think that's um, something that is missing in the invasive species space. It will require very strong leadership in order for invasive species to be seen as part of the whole solution to adapting to the impacts of climate change and building uh, community resilience.